Welcome to the Women Rock Show. Today we're going to talk about sowing seeds of celebration. much in store for you today. My name is Pastor Jessica Roth and I'm honored that you would watch the show today. We are going to press into the Word of God talking about scriptures from heaven and these verses are so powerful and life-changing for us as women. And so let's dig in, let's get into the Word together. You know life and society is going to scream what their definition of womanhood is but I'm here to tell you that God already labeled it, identified it, and told us who we were and created us for His purpose. And so we're going to dig into all that God has for us today. We've been in the scriptures of Proverbs 31, the book of wisdom, and it has been so rich. So if you miss some of those, go back and check those out and then catch up with us. We are going to pick up, and so let's go right now into Proverbs 31, 31. And it says, give her the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. I thought about this for a while and I was like, Lord, what are you speaking in these verses? And he said, think about this woman. This woman was an amazing woman. This woman reaped what she had sowed. I don't know about you, but I want to reap good things from all that I've sowed. This woman reaped from the fruit of her hands. She reaped from the labor. She was a businesswoman. She took care of her household. She could, took care of her family and her her community and her husband. She ran businesses and she sowed good seed everywhere she went. You and I may be sitting here going, well, woo, I want to be this woman. I want them to celebrate me one day because I sow good seed. I take care of my family. I work hard for them. I hope they know how good I work for them. And you know what? God knows. And that's the most important part. As we sow our seeds, as we step into all that God has for us, we are building up the kingdom of God in the world that we live in. And what we do for our families, God sees, and that is good seed sown. There's been many times in my life personally that I have felt like I've sown good seed. You know, I have had loyalty in, in relationships and I have love and time and I put so much interest into relationships and I felt like I've reaped hell back. You know those one-sided relationships? Have you ever felt that way? Anybody know what I'm talking about? And yet you feel like, well, how am I reaping this? What, is this what I get out of this, God? And it was those places that I felt like maybe I didn't do something right and maybe I was sowing in wrong places or I had sowed bad seed and this is what I'm in return with. But when I went alone and I got with the Lord and I began to journal and I began to cry it out before God and I began to love the Lord, the Lord was so gracious to me. And he began to show me things about myself that I needed to change and I had to go and ask for forgiveness and apologize to people and and then the Lord also showed me some really unique places because here I was thinking I was reaping bad from these relationships but God was talking to me and he was telling me that I'm actually protecting you that there's wisdom in the things that you don't see the big picture in this you're just looking at the law small little piece of the picture and that you have sown good but you are wanting fruit from a dead tree I have an orchard in my backyard and I have this tree and I kept watering it over and over and over again, hoping that maybe it's not dead. And it was an apricot tree. And this year it produced nothing. It was brittle, it was broken, and there was nothing coming out of it. And many times in my own personal life, I have sowed seed and I've watered dead things. And the Lord will protect us from those places at times. And it may feel like it hurts. It may feel like, what are you doing, God? But God is saying, stop watering dead things that will not produce fruit because he wants us to be women that produce good seed and we produce fruit out of what we have and God celebrates that in who we are. And so it's the protection in the hand of God in our lives at times. And so maybe if a relationship has been taken out of your life or maybe a job was removed from you and you didn't understand what God was doing, I'm here to tell you, maybe it was dead fruit. Maybe it was a dead tree and God is saying, I need to bring you to a place where when you sow into it, you're going to reap a beautiful harvest from it because God loves you so much. You see, the Lord began to bring, for me, beauty from ashes out of those broken places, things that have been happening that only God could produce. You need those moments in your life. God produced moments. You need that seed that has been stirring in the ground and cultivating. You need God to produce life out of it and not death. 
You see, I believe that it was from that fruit of my labor of brokenness and humility and the time that I had sown into my time with the Lord and working on myself and adjusting me that God began to produce really good fruit in my life. And now I'm reaping a beautiful harvest from that ground that I allowed God to till and that ground that I sowed seeds of tears in and seeds of sorrow, but God restored it and he brought seeds of life and joy and celebration into my life. And so what I'm trying to say to you is you might feel discouraged. I don't want you to live in the discouragement. Begin to sow some seeds of joy. Speak faith over the dead places. Begin to sow seed into good ground and ask the Lord, Lord, maybe I've been putting all of my time and effort into this, but you need me to begin to sow in new places. And that woman understands her culture. She understands her atmosphere. She understands her identity. And the woman of God understands that God covers us and he keeps us. In Psalms 126, 5 through 6, in the Passion Translation, I love this because it's a paraphrase and it says it so beautifully. It says, those who sow their tears as seeds will reap a harvest of joyful shouts and glee. In your broken places, remember that it's going to turn around and it'll be shouts of glee. Verse 6, that they may weep as they go out carrying their seed to sow. So you might be going and sowing your seed in sorrow. You might be going and sowing your seed because maybe you've lost someone this year and you don't know where to sow your seed anymore because that was your family or that was your connection to to people and things on this earth god is saying there's new ground to sow into you're not done i have a plan for you is what god says but they will return with a joyful laughter and a shouting with gladness and they will bring back arm loads of blessing and harvest overflowing it's not over girlfriend god has your back keep planting seeds you see seeds take time to cultivate we put them in the ground and we don't know what happens to them. I've had a garden many times and I'll put a seed in the ground and it's like every day I go out to that garden and I'm like, is there gonna be a little sprout coming up? And I love when I begin to see the first sprout come up out of the ground and it breaks through and it, and it has to work through that, that ground and it has to be watered, it has to be nurtured and the sun has to come and cultivate it. It takes time to see the product of our seeds. So don't get discouraged in the waiting. Know that God is working it out for his good. Be at rest in who he is and trust that God is working something behind the scenes when you don't see that seed that you've planted. Many times it may not come from the same exact place, but if we sow, God's kingdom will build it and he will do something beyond what we could even think, about, think or imagine. Stay planted. You gotta stay planted. You gotta stay connected to the house of God. Don't walk away from your local church. Don't walk away from something healthy that's feeding your soul. Don't walk away from the word of God and maybe your plans in the day and, and you allow other things to fill your days before you read your word or before you have time with the Lord. Make those things, those are seeds that are sown into you so that you can go out into the world and be all that you've been called to be. Stay planted, love people even if they mistreat you. Build the kingdom of God. That is hard, but keep getting in. Put your hand to the plow. Do something for the kingdom. Raise your children. To train them up in the way that they should go. Go ahead and love your husband and let your marriage be a beautiful picture of Christ and the church. You see, you are on assignment. You are not your own. The devil has taken way too much from you. I'm here to tell you today, you've given him too much room. It is time to stop what he's been stealing from you and demand sevenfold back from him that he has to return it. You are not this old, busted, disgusted girlfriend. No, you are not. You are a woman of the Most High God. You are a daughter of the King. You have his authority. You take hold of what God has given you already and you stand in it and you step out in it and you sow that seed and you will reap back a good harvest. Maybe some of you need to start some businesses. Maybe there's been things inside of you that have lied dormant and God is saying, I need you to begin to stir this up again. I need you to start planting seeds in different areas and see what, what comes from that harvest. Maybe you have been burned by people and you're like, I don't wanna have any friendships. I don't wanna put myself out there anymore. But what if God is saying, be vulnerable, open yourself back up, allow people back in your life because I want to bring in godly relationships. So go be a friend. The Bible says that you have to be a friend to make a friend. And so go do that. You wonder why you don't have anybody in your life? Well, you've been a little hermit. You got to get out of your house. You got to like go and find somebody. Get into a small group. Invite people over to your home and make a dinner for somebody. Enjoy serving others. 
Listen, raise your kids, discipline them, train them, you know, be in their world, have conversations with them, talk about the Bible with your children. These are seeds that are sown that one day you're going to reap a beautiful harvest from when they're adults and they're serving the Lord and their lives are on track with God. Discipline them. I know those are uncomfortable things for us to talk about. The, the society today says, don't do that. Don't. These children need direction. They need boundaries. And God talks about this in his word. Go find out what his word says about discipline. In Proverbs, he talks about those that keep the rod from their children hate them. Those are intense words. Go find out what God means about that. Because God has a plan for us, but we have to sow the seed. We have to do it God's way in order to reap God's way. You see, we have to put life back into our marriages. What are we saying about our husbands? Are we speaking death over them? Are we speaking negative things over our husbands, over our marriages? He bugs me when he does this, and I don't like this about him. And you're speaking death. Let's begin to speak life. Let's speak joy. Let's sow seeds of encouragement. Let's sow seeds of life and happiness. Let's sow seeds of goodness and rest and refreshment over our husbands. They need to be encouraged just as much as we do. And so let's be that for our husbands. If you've hurt somebody, go ahead and humble yourself and allow the Holy Spirit to work through you. Go apologize and ask for forgiveness. Next, if you see your brother or your sister in need, maybe your neighbor or somebody in your work or church or in school, and they have a need, they're hurting, and you can be the answer to that, be the answer. Go out of your way. It may be uncomfortable. You may not know if they would even want to receive that from you, but go and be his hands and his feet. 1 John 3.17 says this so beautifully in the New King James Version. It says, But whoever has the world's goods and sees his brother in need and shuts up his heart from him, how does this love of God abide in him? My little children, let us not love in word or tongue, but in deed and in truth. And this we will know that we are of the truth and shall assure our hearts before him. When we go and we give of ourselves and when we take care of the poor and the needy and those around us, we are women who love God, who fear him and who are sowing really good seed into our communities and our families. I wanna leave you with this verse. James 3, 17 through 18, and it says, but wisdom from above is first of all pure. I love that. And it also is peace loving, gentle at all times and willing to yield to others. It's full of mercy and the fruit of good deeds. It shows no favoritism and is always sincere. And those who are peacemakers will plant seeds of peace and reap a harvest of righteousness. Listen, women rock girls, I want you to reap harvest of righteousness. You've got this. Every seed that is sown, I'm praying a blessing over those seeds. I'm praying that your families are anointed and blessed. I pray your children will serve God all the days of their life. I pray your marriages will thrive and that what the devil meant for bad, God will turn it around for good. Let's be this Proverbs 31 girl that when we sow seed that they will celebrate it later on. I love you girls. I hope you got something from the word today. Before we end, those of you that don't know who Jesus is as your personal Lord and Savior, I want to give you an opportunity to say yes to God. You say, I, I love what you spoke about, Pastor Jess, today, and I haven't had God in my life as my personal Lord and Savior. It's very simple. All you got to do is believe that he is Jesus and that you want him to come and live and dwell and be the Lord of your life. That means you walk away from the old man, your sin, your shame. You can't clean you up, girlfriend, but he can. And you say yes to God and you invite him to come into your heart and be the Lord and Savior of your life. This is a moment that you can just mark in your heart that like that was the day that I said yes to God and I walked away from my old man. So it's very simple. This is how we'll do it. I'm going to pray a prayer. And if you need to do this, maybe you've been running from God and you want to rededicate. Maybe you have prayed this prayer once and you were like, I never really did anything with it. I never even served God after that. But today's the day that you want to get right. Today's your day. Maybe you've never asked Jesus to be the Lord and Savior of your life, but you want all that he has. Pray this prayer with me today and start a new life with Jesus Christ. So we're going to go ahead and bow our head and close our eyes and repeat after me. Say, Dear Father God, I come before you right now and I ask that you would forgive me of my sins, that you would come into my heart and be the Lord and Savior of my life. Holy Spirit, fill me and teach me how to live with you, how to do things your way, how to love how you love. Thank you for your forgiveness. Thank you for your mercy. Today is the day that I'm leaving hell behind 
and I am headed for heaven. Amen. Well, girlfriend, you just said yes to God and you are on your way to heaven. Go find a local church. Get connected with somebody. If you've prayed that prayer for the first time, then please go to our website at www.rockchurch.com and say get to know God button and they will send you some information because what do you do now that you've gotten saved? Don't do life alone. Find a good Bible-believing, Jesus-preaching church in your local area. If you're here in the San Bernardino local area of the Inland Empire, we want to invite you out to come and join us here at the Rock Church and World Outreach Center. We love you girls. I hope you got something from God today, and we will see you next time.